Okay, we're kind of going back and forth on the shower design. I ended up deciding this is the one that I want to build. It's going to be more complex, but it's the one that I want to build. So this is the back shower wall here. This is the, the wall to the right and the short wall to the left, which is the wet wall. Niche right there, niche right there. I purchased this towel saw uh, at uh, the Home Depot so I could do the job. So it's just an inexpensive DIY towel saw. I'll do a review on that after I get into it. Now, I want to figure out where to put my first board down here so I can build these three layers. And I want everything centered on this niche right here so that this border goes right in the center of the niche on the right hand side. So this here is my border which is going to be these three pieces right here. So I mark the center point right there and then I did a mock-up of three tiles with the spacers that I want to have that I'm going to be using. I'm using a tile leveling system that is the Lash, Lash tile leveling system, okay? And then with these I purchased these here which is the uh, tile leveling spacer systems. Now these particular spacers it says creates an even 1 16th inch joint but in reality uh, because the tile has a taper to it uh, on, the, on, on the inside there I'll show you the detail on that. You see the way that it's tapered? So it's, so it's going to be 1 16th here at the very bottom but at the top, the port, the part that's visible, it's going to be one eighth of an inch. So, um, just in, I mean, you really got to watch everything. The tiles themselves, which are listed as 12 by 24, are not 12 by 24. They're a quarter of an inch short on the long side. So you have to measure everything. Um, so I did a mock-up. I put a, a board down here. I got a measurement from the top of this board to the middle of where I want it to be. That measurement is exactly 37 and 3 eighths. Then what I did was, <clears throat> as I came over here to the shower, here's, here's the shower ready for the tile. We're getting ready for the tile. Everything, you know, all the red guard waterproofing is on. We want to get tile on the wall. I'm basing everything off of this niche here so that my uh, center of this niche is where I'm going to put that border line and that border is going to go all the way across which is pretty much right at eye level. Then, so you can see my mark right there, then I brought that mark down to, to right there, zoom in on that, and then that particular line is exactly 37 and 3 eighths below the center point of the niche. Then I took my laser level, leveled that out, brought that line all the way across, and then uh, that tells me where the top of this board here needs to go. Okay, so then I can get this board into place. Now, I've left my marks on the wall uh, so I know where my studs are located. So I know I have a stud right there, and I brought that mark. Hold on, zoom back. I brought that mark down and then marked it on the wall there. And I took that mark there and I brought it on the wall right there. One other thing I did for this project is I used my cell phone and I took pictures of all the walls. Now the stud that I'm going to hook into right now is the one right there where my thumb is at. And I can see that there is a line, an electrical line going right there. And I do not want to put a nail there because there's no nailing plate on that. You see that? There's no nailing plate on that. So then on my marks on the wall, you'll see I've labeled it exactly how many inches no nail. So I know that it's 8 inches off the bottom and 32 inches. So if I, I took down um, where my stud location is, and then I measured up, hold on, measured up eight inches, and then I, and actually I go one inch below and one inch above, so it's at seven and nine inches, and I said, no, no nail there. So it's pretty close to where I want it to be. 
So when I take my board and put that in, and I pre-drilled the hole ensuring that when it goes in, it's going to go in the, between the top of, hold on, just zoom back, the top of where it says no and the bottom of that line. It's like right in the middle. So I'm not going to hit that, um, that wire. So I just wanted to show you that. So my next step is to put this ledger board, uh, well, whatever you want to call it, this bottom baseboard in. This bottom row of tiles is going to be cut about an inch and a half, but I'm not going to put those in until after these three rows here are built up. So I want to get my borders in and get them all the way leveled across uh, and get those up. All right, so I got the three pieces in. I couldn't do it and hold the camera at the same time, but basically what I do is I use the, the level mark to get me to where I want to be and then I uh, pretty much put one one of the uh, supports in then I throw my level on and then I ensure that I got the bubble that I'm looking for because I you know I mean I, I, I like the level and the levels great I mean the laser level the laser is great but I just like the bubble and I want to look at that bubble and see what the heck is going on once I got the back board up then I just took, brought that, brought that over so I could catch a line there, make sure that I got a nice bubble on that, secure that screw right there, then take the two foot level, throw that one on there, and then once I uh, verify that I got a nice bubble on that, then go ahead and secure that screw. Same thing with the one on the left hand side. Okay, so now that I've got my supports in, now it's just a matter of uh, getting myself situated here on the wall and then doing my tiles. Now on the bottom row, uh, which is going to be, this is the row that we're skipping right now because that's the one that's going to be cut. This is the bathtub. The row that I'm going to be working on first is this one right here. So I can establish the center of that tile and then I'm going to have a cut on the right and a cut on the left. Oh, and by the way, on my cuts on the back wall, I'm going to allow for a 1 8 inch gap on the left and a 1 8 inch gap on the right. That'll be clearly covered by this wall and by this wall here, so it's not like uh, you're going to see that. It's going to allow for a little bit of freedom there and it will help me to do the installation. So now I'm going to do a mock-up of this right here for these three rows. And I'd like to get these tiles uh, cut ahead of schedule so this way I can um, mix up my batch of mortar and go. And I'll show you what mortar I'm going to use. Alright, here's the mortar that I'm going to be using on the wall, uh, which is complete contact, large format tile in white, part of the custom building products uh, system, which is set number two. You'll see the tile I'm working with is porcelain and it says right here that uh, this longest side of the tile if it's greater than 15 inches this is all acceptable. My longest side of the tile is 23.75 inches in porcelain so this particular product non-slump for use as a thin or medium bed mortar up to three quarters of an inch. Okay, so let's talk about trowel. Next, I'll show you the trowel. The trowel that I'm going to use is right here. It is going to be a uh, let's see, quip half by half by half. And you can see the notches right there. Now, by the way, when you use this type of a trowel on your system, and it's this exact size half by half by half. Once you lay the tile down, it's going to lay down with exactly one half of that of this measurement right here. So, in other words, if this is half by half by half, it's going to lay down exactly one quarter of an inch thickness. So the tile, which I've got a box of tile right here, if you're looking at, let me just use a smaller one to make it easier. Alright, so here's one of the edge pieces. So when you're looking at the tile, um, 
And if I use this trowel and put this, this tile on the wall, this tile will be off the wall by exactly one quarter of an inch here. After you take the half by half by half and then you, and then you put the material on here and you uh, um, fold, it, fold down your folds and then, and then press it in so it's firmly depressed to get full contact, um, that's how much it's going to be off the wall. So when you do your measurements, you've got to know what trowel you're working with and how much spacing you're going to have and how much everything's going to be off the wall. It's not too bad when you're talking about uh, like one wall as an example on this back wall where you've got like no niches, no nothing. Everything's going to be spaced evenly. But when you've got something like the niche where you don't have uh, a full tile that you're going to put in there, you've got to be thinking about how thick that's going to be in relation to uh, this distance here because if this is out a quarter of an inch this doesn't necessarily need to be a quarter of an inch you can use a smaller trowel because it's not like a large format tile at that point in time you could uh, uh, you could use a smaller trowel so you gotta be aware of your mortar bed thicknesses and what you're working with okay so that's it for now I'm going to get myself set up now to see if I can get this row here built out. All right, so I built up the bottom three rows here just on the floor. Then this is the glass mosaic, 58 and a quarter inches that's gonna go on top. So then I can just start building from the bottom up when after I get my mortar set up uh, and mix my mortar batch I can just start laying my pieces and go up three layers plus the mosaic so that's where I'm at everything the way I want it set for now uh, I got my mud mixed up hopefully it's tight enough uh, let's see if I can show you so that's how tight it is I feel like if I go in tighter, it's going to be too thick to work with, so I'm going to try to go with that. Alright, now, the uh, first thing I want to do is I want to get a little back butter going on my tile. Then I'm going to uh, put my notch in there. Alright, so let me get some, uh, some thin set on to the tile.
Okay, we're back the next day. This thin set is dry. You just take a hammer and you can pop these off like this. And then when you do that, the, the plastic portion is trash, um, the clear plastic, but the uh, wedges can be reused, so you save those. So I'm just going to go ahead and knock these off. Okay, here's a progress report on where I'm at right now. I uh, have, you know, done the back wall up to the mosaic tile, and I started the right-hand side wall, and also the left-hand side wall. Started to cut in around my niche. I figured out that I need to do a quarter of an inch shy of here in order for me to do um, the corners that I'm trying to develop right there. When I cut this piece here, I put this piece here in, and then you'll see that it's a quarter of an inch on this side, but it's not on this side, so I couldn't land that piece. I had to take it back out, and I got to correct that and get that just right uh, in order for me to keep moving forward. Uh, I took out the wood and what I did was on the screw holes is I just took some silicone and uh, patched up each of the screw holes uh, that that were the screws that were holding the wood in to keep me nice and level all the way across the, the, the sides and the, and the back. And then uh, after that uh, silicone dries out I'll uh, uh, do another coat of Red Guard or two on top of that just to keep that 100% waterproof where the screw penetrations were for the wood. Now that this tile is all dry, I don't need to leave that wood in there. I can start getting ready to do that bottom course. Um, and at the same point in time, I'm going to continue moving up the wall here. So I bought, had to, I bought a new saw. I ended up buying this uh, rigid rigid saw right here. I uh, forget the model number. I think it's 4030. And it was a $300 at the Home Depot and I was having several problems with uh, I don't know, I got the tray downstairs, I washed it out, but having several problems trying to get the blade perfectly squared off. So I kept trying to square it up by loosening up these bolts here. And even when I did that, it's still not perfect perfect but it's close enough anyway so I'm working with that I made myself a this uh, tarped area here so I can work up up here and also um, I got some water catch buckets there and there and everything I got it unplugged right now okay all right I'll work on that all right so here's a progress report on where we're at so far uh, a little bit of tile on that side and started putting tile um, here around the uh, niche area and so forth and got to this uh, point right there. Right. Okay, here is an update of the shower project. Got uh, some more tile up on the wall. Got the mosaic all the way around. Uh, a little bit more difficult than I anticipated, having troubles with the saw and the saw blade, even though I'm using a uh, table saw. Um, let me show you the saw I'm using real fast. Even though I'm using this rigid overhead saw, 7 inch blade, with a sliding table, it's uh, still just still struggling trying to get perfect cuts. So. If you critique the work and you go real close on it, you can see uneven grout joints as an example. This one here is real tight and then you can see that that one looses up. I even have a chip in the towel right there. But um, because it's already embedded, I don't want to redo it. Um, if you, can, you can continue to critique this uh, if you keep looking at it. You know, like this is slightly crooked here. I mean, um, this piece here was so bad, I decided I wanted to redo that one, so I took that one out. 
I'm going to redo that one, but I'm going to leave the one above it because it's pretty close. It's a little off, but it's close enough. But on the back side here, uh, you can see a pretty good gap right there. Uh, and then when it comes up, so definitely not not perfect cuts. It's, uh, I'm a DIYer, I'm not a t professional tile person. And you know what? It shows. It's very difficult to try to get perfect results like the professionals who do this day in and day out when you're not doing it that often. All right, so here's the project so far. Top half is done. I got this niche here ready to put the tile in. It's not put in, it's just sitting in there loose. I had to order more tile for this section here, so I can't finish off those niches. I uncovered the tub. The tub is now exposed, and I'm ready to put the tile in against the back wall and then the two side walls, starting with the back wall. So I'll probably cut either this piece or this piece here first, allowing a 1 8 inch gap on the top and the bottom. The uh, tile, the way that I, well, let's start with the uh, cement backer board. So the way I did the cement backer board, I got my a gap so it's not resting up against the tub flat down. It's got a gap in there all along the, the perimeter. So this way when the tile comes on, this is just a scrap piece of tile so you can see, that will come down with a 1 8 inch gap. I got a couple of spacers here. Let me just give you an example. So what I'll do, this is just an example. Alright, so I'll take a couple of spacers, put them down. So then what you'll have is you'll have a grout joint here on this bottom section. Now it should be caulking, but I'm going to do grout because a caulking molds out and it needs to be replaced and uh, it's a pain in the ass. So I'm going to go with grout. Um, and then you can see that I, so I've got a gap in between back here so that if water comes down past, for some reason, past this wall to my Red Guard waterproofing, it will come down, drip onto here, there'll be grout here at the bottom, which is porous, it will come through the grout, over to here, and then hopefully into the tub. Now, for, for some reason, if it comes out to here and it wants to go this way, the way that I did it here was at the edges of the tub, I went and um, put thin set on starting here all the way down so it was nice and tight and then as you can see it's completely red guarded and waterproofed so if water once the tile is out to here if water comes out to this point or anything like this it'll come down to here and it'll come down to here and it'll come down to the floor so it shouldn't destroy this section or this section here did the exact same thing so anyways I just wanted to kind of highlight that all right, my next step is to uh, start cutting tile against the back wall. Okay, I want to show you how I'm going to cut this one piece just as an example. So I know that this next piece, which is approximately the size of this level, because you can just go like this and see it's a piece of that. This is my 50% mark, which I just did from my level line down to there. So just put a line on the wall. So I know that's where my tile needs to meet. Now, coming up here, this line here is perfectly level because that's where I had my wood starting point where I started out my course. So I know that's 100% level. The tile is going to be sitting down on this wall like this, coming straight down. And now, to be level, this would need to be picked up kind of like that. This is an eighth inch shim. So I know that it's going to have to be an eighth of an inch going down this way to maintain a consistent grout joint on this portion of the tile. So it's an eighth inch here, eighth inch here. So what I do is I just take my pad of paper here and just, okay, draw out my tile like this. I know it's a full length that way, so I'll just put an F full length 
but then the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here is going to be slightly different. Over here it's going to be one eighth inch shorter, so it's going to go like that. So then when I take my tape measure, which I got right here, and I'll just put this in the tub for now, and bring this down. So when I go to measure this, which is measuring exactly 10 and 7 eighths, so that's 10 and 7 eighths, um, it's, uh, so I'll just subtract out, let's see, I just want to make sure I'm 100% on that. you got to be real precise on your measurements. My, uh, uh, a little bit of junk here on my measuring tape right at that point. Yeah, that's exactly 10 and 7 eighths, so 10 and 3 quarters. So what I'll do is I'll write down 10 and 3 quarters here. Then what I'll do is I'll come out here about this distance, which is fine, uh, like that. And then, uh, then I'm going to take a measurement the same way I just did it there. Let's see if I can give you this on the... Uh, get you that over a little bit just so you can see that 100% or as much as possible alright so then measuring down here to right there it is 11 and 1 eighth so that would be 11 inches because I'm going to subtract 1 eighth of an inch so that's 11 inches there so that's actually a uh, it's a lot more than an eighth difference there, isn't it? Measure twice, cut once, measure one more time. Yeah, well, it's about, it's 11 and 1 16th. All right, so 11 and 1 16th would be 10 and 15 16th. Um, so that's how I'll do that one, 10 and 15 16th. All right, so then once I got all right, those measurements, on my paper. Now I got to transpose those over to the tile. Now one thing I want to explain about my tile. My tile has a reveal on it uh, like a like an like a board or a beveled edge on the factory cut side and it's exactly 1 16th of an inch. So as an example what I mean by that is is that on the factory cut side, and if you take your speed square and you put that up against that, that has a gap right there of exactly 1 16th of an inch. So when you cut uh, on, the, on the side with the saw, you put that right up against it, that's going to be 100% flat. So, you, so depending upon how precise you want to be, uh, you need to take that sixteenth into consideration. So on my measurements that I told you, uh, 10 and 15 sixteenths, I actually need to subtract 1 sixteenth of an inch for the bevel there and the bevel here. So we'll do that when we put it down on the, on the paper, on the actual tile. Another thing is you need to determine what is a good material to use for marking. For me, uh, just a simple big pen is working out pretty well. I can get nice fine lines. So here's my tile right here that I want to mark out. This is a full length tile that is, uh, see, it's, see, when they sell it, it's 12 by 24. If you go and take your straight edge on it, it's actually 23 and 3 quarters of an inch. So Again, you got to measure every little thing when you when you're doing your work. Uh, but in my case, it's it's fine. I'm perfectly fine with what we have. Now, okay, so now we want to mark our tile exactly where we want to cut. So on this one, it's going to be ten and three quarters. Ten and three quarters is right there. And on this side, it's going to be. 10 and 15 sixteenths. So 10, make sure I'm flat here. 10 and 15 sixteenths is exactly right there. All right. So 10 and 15 
So now it's just coming across and let's see, it's going to be right there and right there and right like that. Make sure you're up against it good. All right, so this is a tough cut. This is a lengthwise cut that I'm going to need to do on the saw. So now I've got to prep my saw for that lengthwise cut. Alright, so once I'm done cutting the piece, this is the cut edge, this is the uh, factory edge. I take a uh, sharpening stone, rubbing stone, whatever, and I'm just kind of cleaning up this edge here, the cut edge. Basically that's it. Let's go see what this piece will look like on the actual job. See how all that bled in. Okay. Looks like it's a little low on the left hand side. So it's going to have to come up a little bit there. There's an extra sixteenth inch shim here. Alright. Alright. So, there it is right there. That's exactly what it's going to look like. Uh, which isn't, which isn't bad. It's a sixteenth of an off. I'm off about a sixteenth there on the, on the left hand side, but it's fine. It, you won't notice that with the grout. Alright, so basically that's it. and Just continue on doing the rest. Alright, here's a progress report. I have the uh, edge tiles just put in. You can see that they uh, still have the uh, level lock system put in place because that's all fresh. I was able to get it nice and um, flushed out on the edge of the tile coming towards the wall there so that looks kind of nice uh, and I was able to carry that through all the way uh, all the way through like that uh, what else uh, this niche here is uh, all cemented in so those pieces are cemented in um, so obviously I still need to grout everything this side here again the edge was just done just today so that's all fresh. Um, this niche here, I got pieces on order, so I can't finish this up until I get those pieces in, and then I can finish that up. So, anyways, this is just a quick progress report to see where we're at on our job. All right, so here's an update. I'm starting to grout. This is the uh, grout that I'm using, which is uh, Fusion Pro. Uh, single component grout, so it's pre-mixed. You just scoop it out with your uh, with your grout float. Uh, the color that I chose here is um, a bone. 
So anyways, that's that. And then, uh, so I've already started doing just this section right here. Uh, up to right about there, you can see where I stopped. So I want to get this section done right here. And you can kind of see what the final product is going to look like with the uh, with the grout in place. Here it is without the grout on this wall here, you know, and then here it is with the grout filled in and dried overnight. So give you an idea of what the prod project is looking like. Uh, you know, not bad, not bad. Uh, not uh, some some spots I wish I was a little bit better off. You can see like a um, a gap there on the joint. So my gap joints are not as consistent as I wish they were. Okay, so with that, let me show you how I go ahead and put this particular grout because this single component grout is a little bit different than sanded, non-sanded, traditional cement based grout. So let me show you how I work with this grout. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I scoop the, uh, the grout out of the, oh, you know what, I made a mistake. There's one thing I need to do first. First, I need to uh, moisten up the wall. I should have done that first. Right, let me do that right now. So I want to get this section done right here. So first you moisten up the wall, then go ahead and take your grout. And scoop it on. You get this. This cures by evaporation. So when you're working with it, it's got to be kind of moist and pliable and so forth. Uh, and it and it cure. It skims over rather quick. And and you don't want that to happen while you're while you're working with it. Uh, so just kind of filling in all the all the areas that I want to get filled in here. It has a little bit of a smell to it, but it's not too bad. Hard time getting this joint up here. Alright, so once I get to that, then I'll go ahead and take the sponge, wet the sponge, 
and very gently in a circular pattern work that. Sometimes you can't do a circular pattern like when you're up against here. Keep rinsing the sponge out. take a uh, uh, microfiber cloth and very very gently wipe off the excess residue Basically that's it. And I'll show you that on a close up. Uh, you can set see here, let me hold on, let me uncreate this. Alright, so here's this top section that I just did. I just kind of work in small sections. You can tell that this joint up there, the top one, was the hardest one for me to get. Uh, but basically this is what it what the process is and I'll just keep following that through I still have to uh, finish the tile out over here I still have to pick up that tile so I can finish this but I can at least get this wall grouted and this wall grouted uh, while I'm waiting on tile so anyways that's it okay here's an update on the uh, shower project I finally got the uh, the extra pieces right there in order to complete the tiling around the niche here so uh, my focus is on that right now uh, meanwhile I have been using uh, the uh, Profusion uh, grout product here uh, in order to uh, to do the grouting so I can show you what basically the finished product is going to look like around this niche you can see it's it's pretty much all been grouted and everything as well as this uh, entire wall up to the ceiling uh, plus the back wall uh, and also on this wall here too I did I did a lot of that this wall here except around the niche and then I brought it down to the tub uh, I didn't uh, remove that piece of wood yet, so I still have to do, you know, the the very low section. So you can see where I kind of stopped. Oops. So, anyways, I still have to pull this piece of wood out and do that. But I'm not going to do that until I do the grouting for this, so I can do this all in one shot on the grouting. Uh, but at least you can kind of see the final product uh, on a lot of the shower here. The whole back wall uh, is completed except for like I said at the at the very bottom when you do the grout it kind of pulls everything together uh, it kind of hides a lot of your mistakes I'm the installer I know where all my mistakes are at one mistake that I made is right here 
and that kind of irks me. What happened was, see if the camera can pick this up right there. What? Oops. Right there is where I had a piece of um, uh, the uh, the mortar, thin set mortar, sticking out, and I had used a screwdriver to try to scrape it out. But this was already in place. This was already in place, and the screwdriver chipped in between. So if you want to scrape out thin set in between two joints where it kind of oozes out, do not use something like a wedge shaped flat bit bladed screwdriver. I used then I stopped immediately and used a utility knife to scrape it out. So either use a plastic tool or a utility knife or something straight, not nothing with a wedge. Otherwise you can possibly get this chip. So that was one mistake that I made. Another mistake that I made is right here. Wait a minute, I gotta find it. I'm like, well, I gotta zoom in because I can't even see it. There it is, right there. All right, on this particular mistake where there's a chip in the tile, what happened was is that I laid this tile into place, and I had my uh, <coughs> my my lock system here. And I wanted the towel to move this way. So I used this tool right here to go in between the tile like this. And I kind of went like this to try to get this to push over. This tool wasn't in deep enough in order to do that. And it ended up chipping the tile right there. Oh, well, by this time I had already put it in place and I was frustrated and whatever. And I didn't feel like pulling this tile out in order to recut the whole tile because because I chipped it. You know, if I wanted to be 100% professional, I would have done that. But I thought, you know, it's in the corner back here. And I was having a real difficult time with the saw on this project. I do not recommend the saw that I purchased. I wish I had spent $500 and got the Lowe's 10 10 inch cobalt saw. That's what I wish I'd have purchased. All right, here's another mistake. On camera, this may be may look all right, I don't know. But in person, I can tell you that because I didn't set this mosaic properly, it's not flushed out properly, so there's an extreme amount of grout here and here. What I should have done is I should have used quarter inch wonder board put it directly in back here to, and then put that into place, set that overnight, and then the next day come out and then put the mosaic over that with a high strength polymer uh, thin set mortar and then it would have been 100% uh, flush and I wouldn't have had these extreme grout joints. So the grout joints are kind of masking it but I know that I screwed up. So that was a mistake. So anyways, because I'm the installer, all the mistakes I see. So my greatest problem, like here, let's see if I can show you at an angle. Because I didn't use the proper technique on the, on the, on the mosaic border, it, I didn't, so this kind of didn't, didn't flush out properly. So it's tapering in. So there's an extreme amount of grout down there. So that was a mistake that I just, I did. I can see a film here. I'm going to have to wipe that down and get that film off. Okay, anyways, uh, that's where I'm at. I'm just giving you an update where I'm at. Now I'm focusing on getting this niche done. I want to get this niche done today so I can get this grout done on my next day. All right, here we go. All right, here's the final product with the grout in place towel niche is done uh, came out alright I mean when you put the grout in honestly it hides a lot of mistakes so uh, pretty pleased with the results uh, looking at it now you know, I was pretty nervous about all the mistakes that I had made, but once you put the grout in, I must admit, it kind of hides a lot of your mistakes. Um, here's some close-ups on the niches. 
niches were very difficult. These cuts were very, very hard to do. I must admit, I uh, probably should have tried a different border rather than this quarter round pencil trim. That was just really hard to try to get that just right. Anyways, um, and this is supposed to be a soap dish down here and then obviously shampoo bottles here and then there's an extra one back there. Um, just kind of noticed that little thing. Uh, anyways, that's it. I just wanted to kind of show you where I was at. So the uh, tub is done. Uh, next step is to work on the walls and get that going. But I uh, just wanted to show you where I was at for now.